The first design details of the Red Bull's 2026 F1 car have finally begun to be revealed. And they're interesting to say the least. While everything on the power unit side is shrouded in mystery, we can't say the same for the car and chassis. It's been revealed that Red Bull have chosen to incorporate a double pushrod layout at both the front and rear of the RB22. A choice we already know Ferrari have decided to take, and more than likely the majority of the grid will conform to this layout. Now, it may be considered a bold and somewhat major shift in design choice by the team, considering their great success in the ground effect era with a pull rod front suspension layout, but when you understand how the 2026 front rings are going to be interacting with the rest of the car, it becomes a lot more clearer why Ferrari and Red Bull, as far as we know already, have chosen to go that route. And to understand why that's the case, let's look at the 2026 technical regs with regards to the front wing. But before we expand and explain why it is important, if you've enjoyed the video thus far, do hit the like button, the hype button if you have it, and of course hit the subscribe button to join everyone else here on F1 Unraveled on my journey to 20,000 subs, which I'm hoping to hit before the end of this 2025 season. Right, let's get into the front rings of 2026 and how it's going to have an impact on the design choices and decisions made. For 2026, the central portion of the front ring, as indicated on the screen right now, will likely be backed off to feed the floors with clean mass flow. Thus, the outboard portions of the front ring will be more loaded, resulting in more upwash. Thus, the reduction in uprush along the nose could mean that the pushrod solution is less aerodynamically problematic than the pull rod. Outboard, the pushrod junction in the upright is lower, so out of the rate of this increasing uprush. Hypothetically, the pros and cons for pushrod are as follows. So lighter material options for front suspension due to compressive loading conditions. The aero junction is higher out of the uprush along the nose, just helping with the airflow and cleaning, cleaning that up, which is to name but a few. And there are of course cons as there are with any choice you make, whether it was pull rod or push rod at the front and rear. Cons, heavier suspension components are higher on the nose itself which of course in turn makes a higher center of gravity, potentially impacting the mechanical handling. And of course, the junction along the upright in upwash trajectory could make brake cooling complex and messy. But nonetheless, if this does turn out to be true as Autoracer have released yesterday, it is an interesting decision that Red Bull have chosen to go. And then we now have confirmation of not only Ferrari, but Red Bull. So two out of the big four teams have chosen this route. And it isn't just the impact a pushrod layout at the front is going to have with regards to the whole car. It is also the rear end. And for this, we're talking about the diffuser of the 2026 cars, which are completely different from the current generation we are in. To begin with, the diffusers aren't necessarily going to be anywhere near as shallow as the 2017 to 2021 cars, which may be promoting them to keep the pushrod at the back. But that's maybe not necessarily the complete or the kind of primary reason for doing so. It is more about, they've probably seen through all of the research they've done with regards to their cars, opportunities within this layout. And as a result of that, they've decided to go down that particular route of a double push rod both front and rear. And quite pure and simply, it is probably all to do with packaging at the rear end, keeping the airflow as clean as possible. And that is what the push rod layout will enable over that of the pull rod 
design layout. So very, very important factors that the engineers and the design teams all harmoniously have come to a decision on. The benefits outweigh the negatives with regards to it because no matter what a team decides, there are going to be compromises to be had with regards to what they choose. There is no, we go this route, everything is plain sailing, blue skies, and it works perfectly. That is not how life works, it's not how F1 works. There's always a compromise. Now, of course, this is all relative in terms of it being theorized. The teams don't know until they actually hit the track in Barcelona for that private 2026 preseason test in the end of January. That will be the first time through which they actually have, of course, minus a filming day. I'm sure they will do before that test, actually. That will be the first time they actually get driver feedback from like Max and whoever his teammate is to regarding whether that is a positive approach and a positive decision that they took. But of course, it won't be until that whole free kind of pre-season tests with Barcelona and two in Bahrain, will they actually get a full or a better understanding of whether it was the right choice or the wrong one. And then of course, what happens from the results of that is going to have a major impact on the 2026 season. But all in all, a very interesting decision that the Red Bull team have chosen to go, particularly as it leads away from the Adrian Newey designed pull rod front layout for their suspension. It was something he pioneered, pioneered in the ground effect era and put to fantastic use claiming all of the world titles bar this 2025 season with regards to the drivers championships. What happens only time will tell and it's going to be an interesting 2026 particularly at the beginning to see which other teams in Formula One have gone this route. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope you've all enjoyed this video here on F1 Unraveled and I will see you in an upcoming video soon.